I do have a, a little scenario that I like to sort of uh, give an idea of where we're going with this effort and what you can get out of knowing how to work with large data sets and to extract information from data. And one scenario that comes to mind is uh, back in the late 90s and uh, early last decade, a lot of large retail organizations, including Walmart, um, had huge amounts of transactional data. They were just sitting on exabytes of information about what they sold, at what time of day they sold it, what day of the week, uh, what time of year, and also what else people bought during those same shopping instances. They didn't have complete data. They didn't know everything about the customers, uh, who they were, their addresses, their zip codes, uh, their income, their uh, gender, their culture. Um, they didn't have a lot of information about the customers that what, of what they bought, being a retail organization, but they knew what time of day, what day of the week, what time of year, and what else they bought. And so they said, like, what can we do with this data? We're spending all this money on these enhanced uh, information systems for this transactional processing, and what can we glean from this huge amount of data that we have to spend money on backing up, uh, being able to access, consolidating, and creating utilities to report on it? So this led to uh, a field of data mining called market basket analysis. And one thing that they started to realize is that uh, if we can categorize all of the products that we sell into, say, a finite number of categories, 255 is the one I remember in a case. So if you sell 10,000 different individual products, if you can put them all into buckets. And one thing we do with Excel is show how you can look up or categorize values using some advanced Excel features so that you can glean a little more uh, aggregate information on different subject area, on different types of products. So if you can categorize all of the products that you sell and do a, a bunch of sets, what can that tell you? If you can start looking at relationships between those categories. So intuitively, you might think uh, many store managers, those familiar with the retail industry, uh, snack foods, snack foods and beer probably sell really well together, right? People buy beer, they're probably going to get hungry, they're going to have a party, they're going to they're want easy to eat, good tasting snacks. So what other relationships can we tell? What cross-selling opportunities can we identify? So if we know what our customers are buying with what other items, how can we use that to create value and to give our customers a, a better options and to know, to understand our customer base a lot more? But what they found is uh, some unexpected results. They, they went in there and found relationships or correlations between different types of products. And one often noted one was, <laughs> the relationship between diapers and beer. So they didn't go in thinking, you know, let's determine how likely or how much of a relationship there is between diapers and beer, but they a likelihood that if diapers was in a market, it would also be in that market basket. And so I like to ask before we dig into the tools as to how to identify these relationships, what would you as a, as a manager, as a, as a rep marketing representative, somebody working with this data for Walmart, for Shaw's, for a uh, super stop and shop, a large grocery store chain, what would you do with that information? So now that you know that there's a, a likelihood that if somebody wants to buy uh, diapers that they're also going to want to buy beer, I have two kids under the age of three. I, I understand this now, the, the importance of alcohol in this, uh, in this stage of my life, but, uh, so, but it wasn't necessarily expected going into the study. But then realizing that you have all this data, you can identify these relationships. But what would you do? Are there any thoughts? I, I love asking this question because it gives you an idea. So you now know that people that buy Huggies also like to buy premium beers. What would you do with that information? Yeah. I like it. So I heard place the products next to each other in the store. Anybody do something different? Place them on the opposite sides, so then the customer has to shop the rest of the store. Very good. Why do they place the milk at the back of the store? You know the one thing that gets me to the grocery store probably once or twice a week? Milk. Why don't they put it up front? Save me uh, you know, five minutes to walk back there. So why do they put it back there? Yeah, that it might be make more sense having it being closing to the, closer to the loading docks. But absolutely. So I heard two uh, opinions there. One, we could put them close to each other. Maybe you could put uh, any beer that you have a special sale on that you uh, is more profitable for you that there's uh, that you want to push, so to speak. So you could put that close, or maybe you could keep them separate. What if you know that on uh, Thursday and Friday nights that the likelihood of the beer being in the cart quadruples as opposed to just doubling. So if you now know that on the days of the week it is, 
It's even more likely that people are going to buy beer to go home for the weekend with a bag full of diapers. Would you do anything different with that information, knowing what time of week, what day of the week this, this correlation increases even more so? So I like the two ideas separating them. The other one I've sort of fished for is, uh, well, would you run your specials so that they start on Thursdays? Or, okay. So if you know you have a captive market, if you know that they're going to come in and they're going to want to buy the beer when they buy the diapers, maybe run your specials after the weekend so you're not ma minimizing some of, your, some of the value that you can uh, capture there. So that's the example, uh, and this is just one example of all the different correlations, and in the class we cover a lot of other things, but I do focus a lot on Excel because uh, being a marketing class, uh, finance, accounting, all those concentrations, they all use Excel. Uh, marketing more so than you'd expect. A lot of people think marketing, they think advertising, uh, personal sales. Well, I see more and more marketing as data analysis.